Mr. Revolver Guy with DayAtTheRange.com. I'm coming to you with another episode with the Ruger recently released Ruger 10 millimeter Blackhawk. This is a Lipsy's exclusive, and most of you have seen uh, the previous two videos that I've posted about this particular Ruger. But friends over at the 10 millimeter firearms forum uh, started to ask a bunch of questions. Uh, started to ask some questions about uh, shooting across the chronograph. So that's what we're here for today. We're gonna shoot a couple of firearms. I have a little bit of a surprise for you. We're gonna shoot a couple of firearms across the chronograph. Is it scientific to make sure I put out my disclaimer for my friend Dredd over at the 10 millimeter firearms forum? No, not necessarily uh, scientific, but here's what I mean by that. As you can see here, the 10 millimeter Blackhawk has a six inch tube or six inch barrel. Uh, that doesn't include the cylinder. Well, the surprise is I have a six inch para elite hunter in 10 millimeter that I will be uh, shooting across the chronograph as well. And as Dredd has already pointed out, the barrel lengths are measured a little bit different. The barrel length on this six inch tube actually includes the chamber also. So the barrel is a little bit shorter, but it is considered for all purposes, a six inch barrel. So not necessarily quite scientific, but I'll leave it to your creative thoughts as you see the data come up on the chronograph, I'll leave it to your scientific thought uh, process or creative process uh, on what the data means to you, but also as a little bit of a surprise to test for cylinder gap, we have a three inch, three and seven eighth inch Smith and Wesson 610. I will be posting in the comments on the video down below, I'll be posting I will measure each of the cylinder gaps uh, for the Ruger Blackhawk and the Smith & Wesson so that you guys can see the difference uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, let's get to the loads. So the loads that we're going to use, 135 grain nozzler, 10 millimeter load. That's what it looks like folks. Winchester primer. Uh, that's uh, 10 grains of CFE pistol. And then also, we're going to move over to um, the lead load. Where is it? We're going to move, move over to a lead load with Winchester primer, but it's 175 grain semi wad cutter, specifically loaded for the 1911. And that load is seven grains of CFE pistol. And then we have the 200 grain. This is a little bit different than the previous two videos. In the previous two videos, you saw 200 grain lead projectile. I don't have any more of those, but what I did have around the house when the, and was able to get loaded up for this video today, I was excited about doing it, um, is 200 grain nozzler. This 200 grain nozzler uh, is loaded on top of nine grains of blue dot. So we'll do the comparison of all three loads across all three wep weapons or pistols, shall I call them. We'll shoot them across the chronograph. The chronograph is five yards down range. Uh, and I do have another video camera up, unlike my last mistake, and I do know the battery's charge. But let's put some rounds down range, get the numbers from the chronograph, and uh, see what this data tells us. So I've got the chronograph set up about five yards down range. I have a camera on it and uh, we'll manipulate the video so that it's a little bit more pleasing to watch, uh, or at least we'll do our best. I'm not a uh, professional there. But first, we're gonna start out with 135 grain loads, and we're gonna start out with 135 grain loads in the Para Elite Hunter. Get my ears on so that it's safe. All right. Here we go.
All right, so I did get an error on one round, it seems like. Man, those 10 millimeter cartridges are kicking way over there. I did get an error on one round, but I'm gonna go down and change the string, and then we'll test with the 10 millimeter Smith & Wesson out of the four inch. Be right back. Now, we're gonna shoot across the chronograph the 10 millimeter out of the three and seven eighths inch barrel via Smith & Wesson. Uh, the one big difference between a double action and single action, as I stated in the previous video, on the Ruger Blackhawk, you don't have to use these moon clips. Well, with the Smith & Wesson 610 double action, you have to use the moon clips uh, to get them to eject appropriately. But let's shoot it across, shoot these same 135 grain loads across the chronograph, and uh, we'll give you the readout. Let's go for it. All right, all five of those loads. Oh, I'm so used to shooting five rounds, I left one. We'll go with five rounds instead of the six. I'm really screwing this up, as you guys can see. Uh, how easy is it to get that one round back in there? Uh, with these moon clips and empty cartridges, that's not easy at all. I'm trying to beat the daylight here, and since I got an error, on the last one. Uh, I'm running out of daylight, so I'm getting in a little bit of a rush, but let's kick this last one off down range. All right, so we got that one off. We're gonna go down, change the uh, string on the chronograph, and we'll fire the uh, Ruger Blackhawk. All right, I got the string changed on the Ruger Blackhawk. I've got the Ruger Blackhawk loaded now. Uh, we're gonna put it across the chronograph. See what numbers we get. Again, this thing is such a soft shooter. All right, got all five of those clocked on the chronograph, or six of those, shall I say. Oh, I'm still screwing up. I am so used to doing five rounds, but have loaded six. So forgive me for that. Uh, let's see if we can get this six one. Wow. This is what happens when you get in a little bit of a rush, a little bit unplanned, but I wanted to get you guys this data, not to mention uh, 
I thought it would be fun to see. So we'll unload the Blackhawk. Those were the 135 grainers. Uh, clipping along pretty good. Gonna go change the string and we'll get to the 175 grainers. 